Now before you start animating, it's a good idea to know what frame rate you're going to use. You see, film video animation, whether it's digital or traditional, is actually a series of still images or frames that are played in quick succession to create the illusion of movement. The frame rate is how many images will be displayed every second. So a frame rate of say 24 frames per second will display 24 images every second. A frame rate of 30 frames per second will display 30 images every second, and so on. By default, Blender will play back at 24 frames per second, which is the most common frame rate that is used in animation. In Blender, the frame rate can be found in the output tab, which is the one that looks like the printer over here. So here you can see at the top in the dimensions little panel, the frame rate. It is by default set to 24 frames per second. If we click on this menu, you have access to some of the other common um, frame rates, or we can choose our own, which is custom. Then we can just type in whatever frame rate that we wanted, say 12 frames per second. So now we're playing it really slow. He's going really slow. Let's speed it up. Let's go to 60 frames per second. Now he's going super duper fast. But let's choose the default, 24 frames per second. There we go. Now a higher frame rate will give the illusion of smooth motion, but it does have its downsides. You see, the more frames you have in your animation, the longer it's going to take to animate, and the longer it will also take to render. This could mean time and money. That, and a few other reasons, is why the default setting is 24 frames per second. Now you're probably saying, but hey, I'd like to play video games, and don't they run at 60 frames per second? So shouldn't I animate at 60 frames per second? Well, not actually. See, game engines can take the animation data and then sample the subframes that's in between each one of these frames and upsample it to translate it into 60 frames per second. So most games that run at 60 frames per second will actually be animated at 30 frames per second and upsampled. And if you're wondering why they choose 30, that is because it divides nice and evenly into 60. Now I can tell you that animating 30 frames is a lot easier than animating 60. Twice as easy in fact, and you don't even need a calculator for that. Now when we're animating, it's always a nice thing to be able to actually see the correct frame rate that we specified in our settings actually displayed in our viewport. But if you have a look here up in the top left, I'm getting a red number. Now this signifies that there's too much information going on for my computer to keep up and calculate every frame. It can only do seven, about 17 frames out of the 24. So there's a couple of things that we can do to speed this up. The first thing that we can, we can do, if this is a really complicated scene, just make sure that you hide anything that isn't necessary. Although that wasn't very dense, so it didn't help very much. The other thing we can do is check our playback settings. So up here uh, in our sync settings, it will most likely by default be set to no sync. What that does is it's going to force the computer to show you every single frame. That's why he's uh, running a little bit slow here. So if we change this to say frame dropping, what that's meant to do, although it hasn't helped in this situation, is it's meant to drop frames to kind of keep keep up with that. If, it, if it's going too slow, get rid of the frames it can't display to give you a better, better playback. I've always found that if you change it to AV sync, what that does is it uses the um, the audio clock settings rather than the video clock settings and it's going to give you a faster playback although it's not showing you every single frame so we're still getting 16 frames per second but it's dropping the ones that it uh, can't display in time just to give you a better feedback of actually how fast he's moving and stuff like that but you need to remember that not every single frame is actually being displayed here if we want every frame to be displayed, it's always nice to get the 24 frames per second that we're after. So one easy way to do that is to force a simplification on the scene. Because in this one, our character is using a lot of subsurfs and it's, um, it's actually making the viewport a lot harder to calculate. I'm just gonna jump here into our render settings and that looks like the back of a digital camera. That's what that one is. And down here you see simplify. Now if we enable this, this will probably be uh, set to six by start, but just drag that down to zero. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna turn off all of our subdivision surfaces and now we're getting the 24 frames per second. Another thing to note is if you're good using particles, particles might actually be slowing it down. So here is a setting if uh, you've got a lot of grass or a lot of fur, you can drag this down to actually simplify the scene. When we activate Simplify, these are the viewport settings and it hasn't changed our render settings unless we want to. So we can actually disable the um, subdivision surfaces in our render if we want, or we can just leave that at default. And if we always wanted to uh, do a play blast or render out our viewport, we can disable this, render our viewport, then we get an, a nice looking OpenGL render with the subdivision surfaces enabled.
So there we go, there's a couple of different ways that you can speed up your viewport. Make sure that you hide anything that isn't necessary. Turn on your AV sync and also turn on simplify to make things run at the desired frame rate.